Welcome to Sweethearts or Rivals. I'm Charlotte. I'm Justin. Today we're going to be doing a list video. Yep. What the list is going to be is if we ever had to call our game collection to 50 only, no. we won't. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> what 50 would they be? Yes. And we're going to be doing today from 15 to 11. That's correct. And we determined the games on our list by how many tears we would cry. If we never got to play the game ever again yep. in our entire lifetime. Now that we are up into like the top 15, we're talking buckets of tears. <laughs> buckets? <laughs> buckets of tears. Like a teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> like a teaspoon. <laughs> you like, shed two tears for this game. Yeah, yeah. No, buckets. Man, oh these are goodness. good games. I can't imagine never playing these games again. Oh, yeah. And a disclaimer, too. Like, these are just out of the games we own. Yeah. 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 So, some year it could be a different game on the list. True. Yeah, because yeah. our collection is always getting bigger. Yeah. Seems to be the the trend. Yeah. Anyway. If it gets a lot of likes, we'll definitely have to do this next year again. I don't know. It might have to be like a biannual thing because I don't know if our collection changes that much in a year, does it? Mm. We'll see. It kind of does. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going from 15 to 11 in this video, and it's my turn to go first. My yep. number 15 is Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders of Time. Yep. I mean, that's not... No, no. just Seven There's, Wonders. Yeah. <laughs> Still one of the... I think... Let me just put it down. Oh, look at your list. Yeah, my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, drafting game. Cool. Yeah. And... Um, we used to have the leaders and we used to have the cities expansion. We got rid of the leaders expansion. We I prefer it just with the city expansion. Right. You know what? I really didn't matter to me. No. I could play with it. I couldn't play with it. It was yeah. like I like all the extra cards, especially the um kind of underworld cards that come out with the cities expansion. I really mm -hmm. like that. With the leaders expansion. The gray cards, you mean? Um I think, with the masks no, on them. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like those. I found with the leaders expansion, there's an extra phase where you yeah. had to do the leaders and you had to draft those. And it was just, it was too much stuff to put together at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just like right now, the way we have it set up, I can, we can take it out and depend on the player count. We set up and just start playing. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because I was really looking forward to the uh, Babylon or Babel expansion. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I realized how much I didn't enjoy adding new uh, stuff, yeah, my interest in that expansion pretty much just went away. Right. The way we have it set up right now, that's the way I like to play it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But you know what? I think next year, mm -hmm. because we've been watching quite a bit of the... The spiel, the SMS yeah. spiel fair. Yeah. There could be a different game. Yeah. The, the duel. duel. The two player specific version. Yeah. Looks, every time I lo watch something about that, it looks more and more interesting. Right. I was just going to say that. My yeah. interest in the game increases each time I watch something. Yeah. Even so, though I don't really learn anything new about the game, yeah. it just seems to me it's going to work way better with two players of course yeah. it will because it's designed for two players yeah. but um it reinforces that idea right yeah i yeah. thought that before and i still think that now and just <laughs> i don't want to take up too much more time but just i wasn't interested in the seven wonders duel just because i'm kind of lukewarm maybe on the seven wonders mm -hmm. um but as a game designed specifically for two players yeah it's getting more interesting yeah yeah anyway so that is my number 15, Seven Wonders. <clears throat> I love the uh, um, drafting of the game. I love the escalation of building up your civilization through three ages. I love that it works, I'm not gonna say perfectly with a lot of players because there's some issues with lots of players. Yeah, yeah. And suddenly- With the resources. Yeah, yeah, suddenly resources are out of your reach. I don't really like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I've had games with large player counts that have worked very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Fun, fun, fun. I like that it's quick. Yeah, and it's quick too. I mean, that sounds like it could be. No, uh, that's, that's good. 
But it's a, it's a good game, but I like it even more because it's quick. Nice. Yeah. What is your 15? My 15 is Cthulhu Realms. Nice. Higher which, than mine. Yeah. Because you had that on a, a lower number than me. I had it which I find weird. And yeah. now I'm just like, oh, do I have to reassess my... <laughs> <laughs> it's making me double think it. But I like the head-to-head. -head. Yep. And that's Cthulhu... It's not a creepy Cthulhu, so it doesn't mm -hmm. like detour me from the game. Like some of the Cthulhu games are a little too heavy in theme for me. Yeah. Because um, Cthulhu, if you're really getting to oh, Cthulhu, it should be creepy. It's scary and creepy. And scary, and Cthulhu Realms isn't. No. Which I like. No, it's kind of it's got a humor to it. Yeah. Um, and like you said, it's the head to head, mm. and then it's just the combinations of cards that you can get is yeah. kind of fun. I like that. They're not all like it's. It's kind of more like a deck building. Yeah. Um. So you're only looking at so many cards at a time that you get to choose from, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. Like as a two player game, like sometimes the cards that come out after you've purchased something. Yeah. Yeah, could be just the right ones for my deck, and it's yeah. I like building my deck and trying to get cards that work well together. I tend to forget that one of the powers <laughs> you can do is abjure, which means you can get a card out of the game. And I yeah. tend to forget that you can abjure one of the cards in that the offer. That are available. Yeah. And I need to start doing that more because, yeah, there are cards like, oh, she's going to get that card. I should be getting rid of that card first. It's funny because <laughs> I don't tend to do a lot of the abjuring yeah. because I find it... It just adds that one more layer of complexity to the game. Yeah. And I think once I've played it a lot more times, I'll be able to focus yeah. a little bit less on building my deck and playing my cards and then try to manipulate yeah. a little bit more of what's available or what's actually in my deck. Yeah. Um, I find it really fun. Yeah, and I'm thinking that if we keep playing it heavily mm -hmm. and we ever get to the point where it starts to run out of steam, it would be very easy to have expansions that are new suits. It's true. And then you could like... You could swap them out. Yeah, mm -hmm. very Dominion style. Yeah. yeah. Well, it probably will depend on how the game does. True. If they uh, support yeah. it with expansions and yeah. whatever. Yeah, exactly. But they didn't... Did they expand the Star Realms one? Oh, yeah, lots of expansions. Oh, they did? Oh, tons of expansions. Oh, okay. oh absolutely. See, yeah. I don't know too much about Star Realms because yeah. it didn't... That game didn't appeal to me, so I didn't really follow it too much. Yeah. But. Me too, but I do know that, yeah, there's a lot of expansion for Star Realms. Oh, cool. And part of that was because it's it, it was so popular. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how Cthulhu Realms oh, does. Oh, but maybe the Star Realms burnt people out on it, though. And maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. We're enjoying it, though. A lot. We are. <laughs> yeah. What's your next one? All right. My number 14 is Seasons. Seasons. Yeah. And Seasons, um, kind of like Cthulhu Realms, but in a different way. It gives it's me kind of a feel of Magic the Gathering. Kind of is. Yeah. You got these cards and you are, you're not attacking each other, mm -hmm. but you're looking for good card combos to get more and more points. Accumulate your points yeah. the fastest. Yeah. yeah. Which is a somewhat magic -y thing to do. Mm -hmm. The theme is awesome. You're summoning awesome things, the magic items, cool. powers, and then the dice are what really take this game over the top because mm -hmm. you roll a bunch of dice and then you got to pick one out of those dice for what you're going to do this mm -hmm. round. Yeah. And then your opponent chooses a die and then whatever's left over determines how far the game is going to advance. Mm -hmm. And the dice are big, chunky, awesome dice. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about this game for me, I find it a little, not overwhelming, but it's just quite a bit, mm -hmm. is there's so many different cards. Yeah. And then you have that thing where you have to choose different cards for different phases. So it's you can make a big mistake with the cards you draft yeah. and put them in the wrong phase. Yeah, the wrong age. Yeah. Yeah, because at the beginning you draft them, which I love drafting. Mm -hmm. But then once you've drafted your cards, you got to choose in the first year or the first round of play mm -hmm. which three of these cards I'm going to have then and which three are going to be in the second and mm -hmm. the third. And I do a little bit better with <clears throat> tactical things. Yeah, than long-term strategy. Right. Yeah. So I find picking my cards for each thing is a little bit... I can make mistakes there, and it kind yeah. of bugs me. But yeah. that's... The other thing that, that cool. takes a little bit of getting used to is, um, even though you're being introduced to the cards, like 
every time you play, you can get introduced to new cards, and it's just a couple of them. Mm -hmm. um, they're text heavy, and some of their powers are complicated. So you really have to kind of invest a little bit of time in reading mm -hmm. the nine cards you've drafted. Yeah. So that can make it kind of um, setup heavy. Yeah. The setup in itself is almost like a full game. Yeah. And then you get to play the game. Yeah, it's a whole phase <laughs> on its own. Yeah. yeah. But um, I love it. And I've been playing a lot of it on Board Game Arena. Mm -hmm. And that's making me enjoy it more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Probably because I'm getting used to the cards. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. I need to get you in on that so that we can play together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like to play with strangers. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little shy, which you wouldn't know because I make videos. But... <laughs> But there's nobody around us right no, now. No, there's just a cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll have to yeah. play maybe some board game arena turn-based games, just me and you, mm -hmm. so we can get into it some more, because it is an awesome game. Cool. That was my number 14. What is your number 14? My number 14 is Le Havre. Le Havre. Wow. 14. Mm -hmm. We've played it once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's high. Yeah. 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 And I'll yeah. be honest, I considered putting Le Havre, like, on the list... And only reason I didn't was because we'd only played the once. Right. Yeah. I just, I really liked it because it's one of those games you're resource collecting mm -hmm. and then you're turning those resources into something else. Yep. And it's an escalation kind of a thing. Oh my God, is it ever. And it is a very heavy game. Yep. I mean, yeah, we've only played it the once and I'm sure if I played it a few more times. But I would have to say it's in... You know, the light, medium, heavy scale, it's in the heavy scale. Yeah. Like, rating for sure. But that because escalation is amazing because at the very beginning, it's very light. You have very few... Few things you can do. To do and manage. Mm -hmm. But as you are successfully gaining one or two things per round, it escalates the number of choices, the number of things you do and can manage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I just imagine that the more I play it, see, I might have rated it on my imagination of the more I play it, how good it's going to get. Yeah. Because I didn't do so good in my first game. <laughs> I kind of, you can't focus on everything. You have to focus in on just a couple of things. Yeah. And because you have to feed your people, of course. Mm -hmm. And because um, there's a food demand after the end of each round. Yeah. And... I didn't quite manage that very well. But if I can get an engine going to feed my people, I can imagine all the glorious things you can do with that game. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. It was a really good game. I'm glad we played it. I enjoyed it a lot, yeah. What we might have to do is you can play a long game or a short game. I want to try the short game too yeah. and, and compare and, and see And maybe we can are. get some more plays in quicker mm -hmm. and to get learn. Into the game. Yeah, learn the basic strategies or tactics that you need to have a successful game. Yeah. And then play a long game. Yeah. Yeah. But it was very good. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be interesting after a couple more plays to see where it ranks in all our Uwe Rosenberg games. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking it might be the best one. The best one. That we have. Could be. Yeah, yeah you could probably. It's probably true. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that was your number 14. Which means we're moving on to my number 13. Mm -hmm. My number 13 is an awesome medium weight game that we just played the other night, and it is Vikings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's high up because it's got the awesome rondelle, mm -hmm. it's got the awesome tile placement, mm -hmm. the puzzlingness of um, where are you going to put stuff, when are you going to get stuff. Um, if you buy a tile with a Viking meeple on it, and you can place that tile on the level of your board that goes with that Viking meeple, you get to put that Viking out onto the tile right away. Right. But if you can't do that... He has to go in a queue. And suddenly you have more stuff that you need to manage. When are you going to get that queue empty? How are you going to get that queue back out onto the board? Mm -hmm. And that's like whole other levels of puzzliness. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, the specific rules on how you buy stuff. You can't buy the free one until it's the last one of its kind. Mm -hmm. Which means... The last meeple of its kind right not the last so if you buy this that <coughs> means you're gonna buy that which means i could possibly buy that which means you're gonna buy that and mm -hmm. like you're looking at like several jumps ahead of mm -hmm. the buying phase yeah. to see how that's going to shake out and when someone does something unexpected it shakes your whole strategy up mm -hmm. it Just, does 
it's mechanically it's it's a fairly straightforward simple game mm -hmm. but very unique yeah. and intricate it is and i love it yeah it's, it's awesome. a good game yeah mm -hmm. the only thing with vikings is you can play that whole game feeling very frustrated because you don't think you're doing well um, i have seen games of vikings go where it seems like mm -hmm. everybody playing the game is dealing with a level of frustration that they think they're not doing well. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you just have to keep in mind everybody is is is, is dealing with the puzzliness. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I go into it and then I start getting frustrated and then I realize, no, no, no. This this I'm I'm doing good. And then I love the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It sounds like <laughs> almost like a negative. Like everyone can be frustrated with the game, but Really, it's just this weird mindset that you have to be in when you play it. Mm -hmm. And then it's awesome. Right. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what number was that for you? 13. So your 13 is? Forense. Forense. Forense is a good game. I like that game because yeah. you're building towers, and the towers you're building are um, getting you goals. Yep. So once your tower gets to a certain height, you can cash it in for your goal to yeah. get your points but it's got that mechanic of the cards that slide down each time yeah so the cards you get to choose from can be cheaper but each um card how you have to pay with them is your tower pieces like yeah. your towers are your currency so if you want the third card you have to put a piece down on the first and second card to get the third card right yeah. so then the cards that are a little bit lower are getting more and more tower pieces on them to make them a little bit more enticing to get because some of the cards are like horrible cards they do bad things yeah, and they're your... like take that you you just got burned yeah yeah so you either have to like lose pieces or you points or something yeah so i find that combination really interesting on how you purchase your cards and how you manage your tower pieces yeah but you've still got to be able to manage your building area too because that's a whole nother thing like you've There's like once a... you start a tower yeah you have to keep enough tower pieces because there's so many different colors of towers yeah you have to have enough tower pieces of the colors you have to build a tower each time or yeah. you risk losing some of your tower. And then on top of all of that, um, when you've built a tower to a certain level of a certain color, you get to take that tower color level, like scoring card. Yes. And nobody else can ever get that particular scoring card. Mm -hmm. So they either have to be like a little bit lower or a little bit higher. Um, and that whole aspect is an area control. It is. Because yeah. whoever has built the most, like, white towers is going to get some points. Some po many points at yeah. the end of the game. And if there's a tie, it's whoever built the, like, highest tower of that color. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we play the whole game. At the very end, I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot we were doing that whole aspect of <laughs> the, the area game. area control part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For all the bonus points of the game. Mm -hmm. So. It's uh, yeah, it's a surprising game because it seems pretty straightforward and simple, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of levels to it. Yes. A lot of layers. Yeah. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. That's a good game. Okay. That was your number 13? Mm-hmm. We're to my number 12. My number 12 is Keyflower. Ooh. And Keyflower, I feel, is kind of like one of the first Grail games we ever had. Yeah, when we got it, it was a hard one to get because I guess it wasn't being published over yeah. here yet or something. And it was kind of like the... Or no, it was sold out yeah. everywhere. And it was really hard to find. And it was it was a game that the people that we had seen playing it or reviewing it were like raving about it. And we're like, that looks really interesting. And it was kind of one of the first really intricate, hard to find, gamer euro games. gamer games yeah. when we were like first putting our collection together. And then we managed to find a copy, I think, on eBay. Something. For a really good price. Yeah. Yeah. We had lucked out on that. Yeah. yeah. And it was just satisfying to get that game. Like, oh, we got that for such a good price. Anyway. Yeah, it was kind the of, first thrill of the chase game. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, it <laughs> is an amazing game. Um, you are, you got to manage your workers. Uh, you got to manage your resources. Um, you've got to bid with your workers, which means you're going to lose them. Um, you can actually, this is one of the craziest things of the game is you're looking at all these tiles that you're bidding on during the bid phase. If one of those tiles is an action that you would like to take, 
can mm-hmm. actually put a worker on it and take that action before the the auction is over. Yes, and whoever ends up with the tile gets your worker. Gets your worker. <laughs> like just like crazy amounts of really cool things mm-hmm. you can do. Yeah. Really awesome game. And there's a way to change your workers into a different color worker. And if you're the first person to get, like, the first green worker, you can use it to bid with. And then there's yeah. no way that any opponents can get that. Yeah. Because... Because the first person to bid with a color chooses, like, you have to kind of follow like suit. Like the suit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nobody else can bid a different color on that tile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing game. And then as soon as you add some expansions to it, it enters into that realm of games where here's the system... But every time you play, you're going to be playing with different and you have tiles. To aim for this. Yeah, yeah, and different goals. So it's going to change every time you play. Mm-hmm. Um, I would definitely recommend buying the base game and playing with that for a while before you get into expansions. Because if you get all the expansion ones, it'll be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And we've yeah. actually played Keyflower a lot, and we've got both expansions. And I think. And we're still just basically. Yeah. You, um exploring the first ones yeah Yeah. so it's it's almost overwhelming to us which is why we haven't gotten into the expansions a lot lately Mm -hmm. yeah but once we crack that open and really get into it it's gonna like break open this like amazing like endless replayable game yeah yeah good game and Mm -hmm. good with two people too it is good with two for a bidding like yeah or yeah yeah auction thing key flowers my number 12 my number 12 is Istanbul. Istanbul. I, Interesting. I like this game a lot. Have you and won this game yet? I was just going to say, <laughs> <laughs> probably one of the <laughs> things that draws me to the game over and over again is the need to win it. Because <laughs> 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 I haven't won yet. I'm always like one step behind him. That's or like funny. two steps behind winning. Yeah. Um, but I really like the spatial aspect of it. Yep. And, of course, it's got one of my favorite things, resource management, to gain your points, which I really like. Um, And there's the special power tiles you can get. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to the new um, expansion. expansion. Yeah. Yeah. um, This one kind of surprised me. It was... I didn't think it was going to be good, but I I was intrigued by uh, getting it. And I only got it because it was a really, really good deal. It was on sale. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I just... It was kind of an impulse buy because it was on sale for such a good price. Mm-hmm. And then a really weird thing was is I played it and enjoyed it and then played it and enjoyed it and then got burnt out on it and thought, yeah, we should trade that away. And then later on got back into it and found that I really enjoyed it still. We can't trade it until I win it. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> I have lost the game, just not to her. <laughs> when we played it multiple players, I lost. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. And I don't know why that is. I just, I don't know. It's weird. But it's a good game. I think because you were teaching it to so many new players that you were, like, giving them their options. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or helping, you know, like. But I don't know why when we play it two-player. Oh. I don't know why I always win. I don't know either. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. And plus, it's uh, it's not a board. It's a whole bunch of tiles. And there's multiple ways you can lay that board out, or you can just do it random. So that's going to change the setup of the game and how it's played each time, which is kind of cool. Which is nice, because it gives you more of a variable feeling when you play the game. Yeah, Yeah. that's a good game. Mm -hmm. And that was your number 12, Mm -hmm. which means we are at my number 11. Which is the last one. Yep. My number 11 is Five Tribes. Cool. Yep. With or without the expansion. Well, I can't really say with the expansion, because we haven't actually played with the expansion. Not yet. But it's at my number 11 based solely on the base game. And I am a huge fan of Mancala. And this takes the Mancala mechanic of picking up everything from one and then dropping off one, one, one until you put the last one and take that action. And it takes that to a crazy level of complexity and awesomeness. Mm -hmm. And there are so many paths to victory in this game. But you can't start the game off with a strategy of what you're going to do this turn. No. Because it is so tactically based. Mm -hmm. You can only ever do what you think is the best thing to do that turn. Mm -hmm. But I find that really fun Mm -hmm. and challenging. And I'm really looking forward to checking out the expansion. Yep. And then a whole bunch of other reasons that I've already mentioned when it was on her list. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Which means we're at your number 11. My number 11. Yeah, it's Castles of Burgundy. 
Wow, Castles of Burgundy is such a good game. I like that game. Yeah. Because it's got the tiles with the puzzly kind of thing. Because you're trying to gain the tiles to fit into your, your uh, what is it called? Uh, domain, domain or whatever. Yep. And you're spreading it out. And then there's so many different ways to score the points. Mm, yep. Because each different building that you put in does a different thing. Yep. And you're just rolling two dice. And then the numbers on the dice dictate there's only so many things you can do with the dice. Yeah. So you just have to determine that when you roll them, which is the two best things you can do with your dice. Yeah. So it's not overly complex at all. No, it's... You've got two actions, you can do two things, but there is a lot of things you can do with those two actions. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. But it's not overwhelming But it's not overwhelming, lot, no. no. And I also like that sometimes when you do an action, it can trigger another action. Yeah. So you can end up doing quite a few things on your turn. Those are, like, so satisfying. When you're yeah. like, I'm going to do this to place this, which allows me to do then this, and which allows me to do that. And then I'm going to use this die to do that, which allows me to do this. And, you know, right. two dice, two actions, and you've done, like, six things. And those are the things that you have to figure out because you've got to do those multiple actions to yeah. get ahead in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome game. Yeah. Yeah. Castles. I enjoy it a lot. Castles of Burgundy. So that's our next five in the list, which means we're going to come back and start our top ten games that we love to play. Ooh, ten to six. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Later. So you've got all these meeples that in the end you have to feed them with no possible way of getting them out onto the island yep. to like put your uh, fishermen out so that they can actually feed your vikings. But there are ways to mitigate that. <laughs> no, there's not. <laughs> yes, there is. If you can't get the tiles to put your meeples out on, you can't get your meeples out to feed your people. Which is why you always make sure that there's a way to build either down or up. Oh, yeah, that, that, yeah. yeah. But if you can't build out anymore, there's no way to get down or up. Which is why you never let that happen. Which is probably why I won that game. <laughs> probably. <laughs>